السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم مبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وألهمنا بفيض فضلك رشدنا يا رب العالمين الحمد لله إن our upcoming class on understanding the Fatiha and the short surahs, we will be embarking on a very important part of our lives as believers. The, a believer is a person of the Qur'an. It is the Qur'an that is hudal lil muttaqeen, complete guidance for those believers seeking mindfulness. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the opening of Surah Al-Baqarah, the Qur'an is a revealed book. It is the speech of Allah revealed, but that revealed book is not just words that are recited. It is words that necessarily indicate meanings. It is words that necessarily indicate meanings. So to connect with the Quran, it is very important not only that we learn how to recite the Qur'an as it deserves, right, and that's through tajweed, not only that we learn, that we establish the routines of reciting the Qur'an daily, so that we have a daily portion of reciting the Qur'an, but also there is a first level understanding of the Qur'an that comes with connecting with its outward meaning, which is known through the translation, for example, if you don't know Arabic, or, or which is known through consideration as you recite of the meaning itself, if you do know Arabic, that this is what it is saying. And there are some expressions that are rare, so they are very often in mushafs, in copies of the Qur'an, on the margins, they'll explain some of the difficult words. That is, understanding the outward meaning. Imam al-Ghazali and others refer to this as tafahum, seeking to understand. This is what it's saying. Because that base level understanding, even without going deeper into the meanings or reflecting deeply, even that surface level meaning is the first step of guidance. And there's a lot you can do even at that level. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah O you who believe, seek assistance in steadfastness and prayer. That's a clear verse. You are a believer. It is calling you, O you who believe, seek assistance in steadfastness and prayer. That is something that if you recite with understanding the outward meaning, you know what steadfastness is in general, you know what prayer is, salah, you can say, okay, I have tests and challenges, difficulties, hardships, fears, worries, concerns. This is a call and you can act upon it. And you can also build on it because 
you can ask certain critical questions. And these are the questions of the person of intelligent concern that you ask, what is it? Why is my Lord calling me to do this? How do I do it? These are three of the critical questions to ask. What is it? And the reason you ask is so that you can go deeper into the fulfillment. Just as if you were serving someone and they said, make me tea. You could just make the tea or say, okay, how do... How do I make the tea in the best way? How do you like it? And that would be part of the next step from understanding the outward is to clarifying the outward. So even if you're not studying tafsir or the like, there is a degree of understanding that you can pursue just when you recite the Qur'an daily with reflection. How? Let's take this verse. Ya ayyuhu ladhina amanu. O you who believe. Ista'inu bis sabri wa sal. Seek assistance in patience and prayer. So you ask, what does it mean to seek assistance? How do we understand patience or steadfastness, sabr? So you ask these questions, right? and that is reflecting on the outward meaning with the purpose of acting upon it, which is why any concerned believer should have at least one mid-sized tafsir with them. And if you are a student and you've studied some classes um, of Islamic, in, in the various Islamic sciences, you can say, oh, I have studied about patience in such and such place. Okay, prayer. I took that class on perfecting prayer, etc. So you see, but also, so there, these are ways that even while knowing this general meaning of the verse, just the translation, if we're dealing with English, you can deepen your understanding so that you can improve your acting upon the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Anfal, Ya ayu ladhina amanu, istajibu lillahi wa lil rasul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, istajibu lillahi wa lil rasul. Answer the call of Allah and of his messenger. Iza da'akum lima yuhikum, when they call you, to that which gives you life. So this is the next level. You know, we recite properly, regularly, then we strive to understand the general meaning with the purpose of acting upon it. But from that, we strive to deepen our understanding of the outward meaning, of the general meaning, by general reflection by general reflection in the way described, particularly by asking these three questions. What is it? Why? Right? But the why of the servant who wants to understand better so that they can serve better, so they can be better in their attitude and in their gratitude as a servant of God. And in getting these answers, one should have reliable tafsir as part of one's library. One refers to what one has already studied. And that's why we take notes. And so we go back and say, okay, I studied about patience in the book of assistance class. I remember, and, you, and that's part of seeking knowledge, is to review. I, the prayer, okay. How do I pray better? and also by asking questions. It is surprising how rarely do believers ask about the Qur'an. This is your book. This is the book of your Lord. 
the, the Prophet ﷺ said the Qur'an is the invitation and spread of Allah. Al-Qur'an ma'dubatullah. It is the festival spread. Allah has laid out a great spread by which he is honoring his creation. But, so you should have these questions. So you go to the Friday khutbah at a masjid where they have a learned scholar, you have a question. You, you reach out, whether you're male or female. I know there's a, you know, in Australia, in one of the cities, there's a sister, she was a convert. There's actually, she used to attend a very conservative masjid where there's no way she could, inside the masjid you go. She used to contact the imam. Said, Sheikh, I have a number of very serious questions. Can I please, she used to come to the, to the door of the sister's side and she used to ask him questions. But one, the one who cares takes the means. You know, we line up for medical appointments. We line up to go, you know, to, to, for shopping. We, if we need to line up for deen, we do. This is more valuable. So this is that reflecting on the outward meaning for the purpose of what? To act upon it. To act upon it. That, that deepened understanding. And with that, there's also a reflective component there, even with the general meaning. That reflective component is to always so there's a deepening understanding itself to act upon it, but then there's also a reflective component. What is the reflective component? That if you recite these verses, you should ask yourself, what is Allah telling me to do? What is Allah saying to me, given my life circumstance? So you the same verse. So you think, okay, where can I bring this into my life given where things are right now? Say, well, I'm worried about, Jack says, well, I'm worried about whether Jill's father is going to say yes. Okay, seek assistance and patience and prayer. What about this? What about those things I'm worried about? I've had that medical exam and I'm concerned about what's going to happen. Seek assistance and patience and prayer. So you reflect how you bring the meaning of the verse, that's what reflection is. That there are meanings found in a mirror. It's okay, how do I make this reflect onto my reality? And where it's not, you know, some of it is evident, some of it may re require asking. Some of it may require asking or finding out further. All of this is, your, is parts of your living relationship with the Qur'an, even without the study of the Qur'an that we are talking about when we look at tafsir. And this is what we'll be doing in this class coming up. Tafsir is to uncover the meanings of the Qur'an. Tafsir comes from the Verb form, fassara, you fassiru, tafsira. Fassara, fassir is al kashf, is to uncover. So, tafsir is the active uncovering. But what do you uncover? The literal meaning of the, this, this fassir, from which you have fassara, you fassiru, tafsiran. The uh, uncovering is a physical uncovering but it is used in the Arabic language, originally metaphorically, but then becomes a primary usage for the uncovering of meanings. Originally, it's like, for example, if a mother had wrapped her child in, in blankets, she uncovered the, the child, that's fasr, kashf. It's to uncover the, the meanings, but it starts, firstly, by clarifying the meanings that are unclear. And part of the clarification is to give it the context by which the meaning becomes more evident. 
specifying the meanings of the words and of the expressions and of the sentences, both you know, making clear the primary meaning, because sometimes the general meaning could be clear, but without uncovering, okay, you may not realize, يَا هِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِسْتَعِينُوا Seek assistance. Imagine if Jack went to Auntie Huda right? and Jill is listening in. So Auntie Huda says, seek Uncle Kamal's assistance. What's the question Jill would ask if she's listening in? You know, but if she just says, oh, seek Uncle Kamal's assistance, what would Jill's question be? F for what? Right? For what? Because you seek assistance for something. So tafsir makes those kinds of things clear. Sometimes we don't realize that there's something being stated just in the outward meaning that wasn't clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe. Okay. What's the significance of O you who believe? Tafsir makes that clear because it uncovers even the general meaning. Seek assistance. So we, we know what does assistance mean? How do we seek it? But also for what? Oh, I didn't realize that's what it said. There's something implicit. And the reason, and the ulama of tafsir tell us, the reason it doesn't mention, seek assistance in patience and prayer. Seek assistance for what? The implication is in all matters. Because in all matters, we seek Allah's assistance. إِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ The Prophet ﷺ taught us, if you seek assistance, seek Allah's assistance. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to say in Surah Al-Fatiha, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ It is you alone we are humbly devoted to, and it is you alone that we seek assistance of. For what? For everything. Okay, so it clarifies those meanings. But then it goes deeper into those meanings, and by doing so, what's the point? It's not just to be random, sophisticated Muslims, but rather, because if you understand the meanings deeper, you can have a deeper reflection. You can have a deeper reflection. You can have more clarity regarding how to be as a believer in your faith, in your character, in your values, in your attitude, and how to act, to not merely just answer the call, but to strive to answer the call with inward and outward completeness and excellence. Because Islam is both a state of being and a state of conduct. Islam is a state of being just as it is a state of conduct. You're as much a Muslim when you're just sitting still, faithfully, as it is when you are moving around doing good deeds. There's times to be still, and there's times to move. And they say a true believer in their stillness would have as much reward as in their movement. Why? Because why are they still? Hmm? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lillahi rabbil alameen. That at this moment, what is most pleasing to Allah is for me to be still. And they have the active, purposeful intent to do so. Someone just looks like uncle is sitting, waiting for the bus. His older brother is praying in the masjid. But if you understand the active purpose behind his sitting, waiting for the bus, there's layers and layers of intention, perhaps. He is taking the bus to go visit his wife who's in hospital. 
He is reflecting on meanings of faith you could not even imagine. Of reliance upon Allah, of trust in Allah, of certitude, of contentment, of gratitude. He just still. So, but those are the states that having deep reflection on the Quran facilitate bismillah ta'ala. So, what we wanted to highlight that in order to understand the Quran, the first thing you do is you recite the Quran. You recite the Quran. Have a daily routine to recite the Quran. <coughs> As you start reciting the Quran, the second thing, then you, so you have a routine and you strive to correct your recitation as well. But with that, always strive to understand the general meaning of the Quran. That is, if you know Arabic, pay attention to what you're reciting, clarify the expressions that are not clear. And there's short uh, works like Kalimat al Quran of Sheikh Hassanin Makhlouf. You know, just the basic level tafsir that just un uncovers what word mean, words mean. Because there are words in the Quran that many an Arab would not know. That what does mudhammatan mean? Or, for example, Surah Al Adiyat has mul multiple words that I think most Arabs, unless they have you know, some prior education, would not know what it means. What does that even mean? One needs study or just someone telling you, okay, this means this, this means this. Okay. Or have with your reading of the Quran, have a daily connection to the a good translation. And there's alhamdulillah multiple translations. A nuanced, rich, deep, beautiful translation is. Sheikh Noor Keller's translation of Sheikh Noor Keller's translation, the um, the Quran beheld, and we highly recommend that. There's other translations that are also accurate um, and have much benefit, um, such as um, the Clear Quran by Dr. Mustafa Khattab, etc. And that's even accessible on uh, the Quran.com app, for example. And the Quran.com app, very usefully, they're good brothers who are and sisters who are behind that project. It also has something very useful, which is um, they have um, in it a tafsir of the Quran as well. Ma'arif al Quran is right there. So if, you, you know, if you're out and about and you want to have a tool of reflection, it gives you a number of very useful tools as well. Though there is great merit in, in reading from physical texts, including of the Quran itself, the least of which being that you're further away from getting distracted. Okay. But then that aspect that we emphasize with the reading and understanding right, to have a, a reflection on the general meanings or how? Number one, by asking those questions, what does this mean? Why is this? How do I bring this into my life? And for that, you know, you have a specific seeking out of answers. How? By referring to tafsir that is trustworthy. Number two, by referring to related books. So for example, there are, you come by verses that talk about inheritance. They say, ah, I'm, I'm still, no, you. Okay, these verses, they're complicated. Okay. What am I responsible for inheritance? So you go find out. You go find out. And the Fadlillah Seekers has, you know, we have an on-demand course about um, uh, preparing an Islamic will and inheritance. Like at, at, as a practical class, but also to ask questions related to the general meaning. And then there's the personal reflection, which is how do I bring this into my life? What does Allah seek from me from these verses? And then there's the deeper understanding and the deeper reflection that we describe, which is through the study of tafsir. But the study of tafsir 
it is important that one do so through people who have studied this. Right? Through people who have studied this, who are authorized to, and who are basing their tafsir on the classical sources. Because that's very important. Because a lot of people, they just you know, share random reflections on the Quran. They're neither, they're, they, are, they may they may have great goodwill and they may be benefit in those general reflections, but they are neither qualified scholars nor are they basing it on the recognized tafsirs because the interpretation of the independent interpretation of the Quran is like ijtihad in fiqh, making independent legal verdicts in fiqh. It requires a scholar of the highest caliber. Most of the Sahaba did not interpret the Quran, even though they're with the Prophet Sallallahu they were in the age of revelation, they were the people of this language, they would go and either ask the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or they would ask the senior, the senior Sahaba. But even Sayyidina Abu Bakr, when he was asked about something seem, seemingly straightforward in the Quran, he said, what sky can shelter me and what earth can support me if I speak? of the Qur'an by my mere opinion. So, so these are, you know, these, this is some of the context to what we're studying to deepen this understanding, but make a commitment to these other matters, to read the Qur'an daily, to read something of its translation daily, and to have some element of reflection. And a practical thing one can do is to commit in any daily recitation of the Qur'an, even if you recite some short surahs, have one point of reflection. One point of reflection. Even you're going to recite Ayat al-Kursi. So, okay. Have at least one point of reflection. But also regularly ask yourself, even about the stuff you recite day to day, what does that mean? Anytime you find yourself, oh, I'm reciting, you know, Surat al-Humaza, and I've... What does Humaza mean? Oh, oops. Okay. So you go back and you review. Right? So that you can understand and strive to understand what you recite before you recite it. Many scholars I know would plan what they would recite in the prayer in order that they... In order that they have a clarity, not just of understanding, they understand the general meaning, but they would have a, you need a consciousness of the deeper meanings as they recite the Qur'an. And this is called istihdar al-ma'ana, making present, actively making present the meaning. And they say the key to being present is to, the, the, the key to being present with Allah is to make the meanings of presence present in your consciousness. So, so that, and how do you do that? One of the things is, okay, you're going to be praying dhuhr, so before you pray, you decide beforehand, okay, I'm going to recite these two surahs, okay? And be purposeful. Take a few moments to just quickly, if you don't know the Arabic, to read the translation, just take a few moments to look over the meaning and then recite. And it'll transform how you recite the Qur'an within the prayer. Because our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, afdalu salah, the best of prayer, the best of prayer is lengthy, devoted recitation. The word qunut is an amazing word, has many layers of meanings. The qanitin are those who are humbled in their penitent, returning. But qunut is also that humble entreatment that we have, which is the dua al-qunut. But qunut also refers to 
Like in the hadith, afdal salat tulu al-qunut, the best of prayer is lengthy, de devoted, humbled recitation. Here, the ulama t tell us, and it's a misunderstanding that making long dua al-qunut is from the sunnah. It's actually, you know, if one makes it too lengthy, according to many of the schools of Islamic law, it is between bid'ah, severe dislikedness, and some of the scholars held beyond a certain point, it's not a bid'ah and severely dislike, but could also invalidate the prayer. Because it's not from the prayer to have such lengthy qunut, like some people do for Ramadan and stuff. Oh, but people, no, we, we follow the Prophet in accordance with the the imams of our religion. So qunut here, the best of prayer is lengthy, devoted, humbled, standing in recitation. And that's why, according to the majority of the ulama, looking at the various hadith of our Prophet wasallam, what is the greatest part of the prayer? The greatest part of the prayer is standing in recitation. And the standing in recitation has more reward than the prostration. Particularly, and some make tafsir, particularly if one is able to reflect as one recites. There's some people, if you don't know the meaning, you don't know how to reflect, you don't know how to engage your heart, then maybe the more directly impactful aspect of the prayer will be the prostration. Though, of course, every part of the prayer is an opportunity for presence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what we wanted to share as an introduction. So we will be covering in the in upcoming weeks the tafsir of the Fatiha and the short surahs. Next week, we'll look a little bit at an introduction to the Quran and an introduction to the themes of the Fatiha and the short surahs before we embark on the tafsir itself. ta'ala. Because understanding the thematic context, understanding what the significance of the Quran is, but also looking at a thematic overview helps us enter into this great domain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sincerity and steadfastness and uprightness. Um, there's a couple of questions. Uh, go ahead, Sidi Abdul Latif. So what tafsirs would you recommend to benefit from this course? So first, the, the Quran beheld by Sheikh Nuh Keller is essentially a, a tafsir translation. I asked Sheikh Ali Hani that is there a brief tafsir in, the Quran, in, in Arabic as accurate as the Quran beheld? And he said, no, there isn't. So I, I told him, yes, Aidy, then you better work on it because... Sheikh Nuh Keller uh, covered the tafsir of the Qur'an and they distilled this interpretive explanatory translation uh, yes, with you know, the uh, Sheikh Ali Hani. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect and preserve him. So that's number one. Um, the Qur'an beheld itself. If you compare that to a regular translation, it seems a lot more wordy because it is an explanatory as Sheikh Noor uh, laid out in his uh, introduction. It's an explanatory translation. That's number one. Number two, in English, Ma'ariful Qur'an is excellent by Mufti Muhammad Shafir. And you, you can find it even in the, you know, in the, I mean, get, get yourself a physical copy, but it's also available standalone in app format. It's available on the Qur'an.com um, website and app um, which is a, an elegant app as things stand right now, January 2024. Um, it's an elegant and thoughtfully put together application. And then, and there are other tafas here, but that's a, a solid starting point. In Arabic, um, depending on the student's level, um, 
general tafsir is Safat al-Tafsir of al-Sabuni, that's very accessible. Um, tafsir ibn Juzay is a classical tafsir, but broadly speaking, quite accessible. Um, if, you, if someone's a student of knowledge, then tafsir al-Nasafi is concise and cogent. A lot of the ulama for centuries have loved and respected the, the, the tafsir of the great Imam al-Baghawi, tafsir al-Baghawi. It's a mid-sized tafsir, but well-rounded. And there, we have a great tafsir tradition. Other scholars would recommend Hashit al-Sawi on tafsir al-Jalalain. These are some of the mid-sized tafsirs. Um, one of the mistakes people make is that, let me go to the biggest book. But the way one gets to the biggest book is step by step. Like, you know, people just don't say, okay, I'm going to send my daughter to university. No, you go primary school, then high school, then you get ready. You, someone, if they're smart, they may skip a step. But do, have you ever heard of a friend or someone who skipped two years of high school? No, because, you know, you can, if you're serious, if, if you're smart and serious and committed and dedicated and willing to work hard, you could skip a step, but jumping is not wise. If you go up a ladder, you could, you know, you stretch yourself and take one big step. If you try to jump up the ladder, you could fall or the ladder could fall, okay? So similarly, when it comes to Islamic studies, there's books that are entry level, there's books that are inter intermediate level, there's books that are more advanced, and there's books that are very advanced. There's books that are only for specialists. If Brother Sufyan wanted, you know, is having chest pains, he, he doesn't find, okay, how to do, a, you know, like an open chest exploration, and then you grab a scalpel and start looking. Because that's not a general purpose textbook that is for specialized surgeons. So the same thing. So these are some of the recommendations. So this class is on Sundays at noon Toronto time. And we look forward to seeing you from next week. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين